Today, we're going to be taking a look at how we can improve the accuracy of our routes within Semantic Router. So what we've added to the library is the ability to modify your thresholds on a route by route basis. So previously it was for the whole layer. Now you have individual thresholds per route. And of course, if you have many routes, modifying each one of those thresholds one by one, it would probably be become quite tedious. So we've also added in training methods so that you can optimize your route values with a few lines of code, which is great. So let's jump straight into it. I'm going to go over to the semantic router library. I'm going to go to the docs and then I'm going to go down to this threshold optimization notebook and we'll open that in Colab. Now, we're going to be using the local models. So just the local encoder in this example, because we're using static routes only, but that does mean that we can also speed up by using a GPU. So in Colab, I'm going to switch across to a T4 GPU that will speed things up. Although it's very fast anyway, um, like literally a couple of seconds, but nonetheless, you know, if you're doing this for many routes and you have a fairly large uh, training set, then you might want to turn GPU on. Okay, so that has installed and we can come down to here where we're just defining our route layer. We have a few routes in here uh, to give us you know, more to optimize with. So they're pretty lightweight. One thing that I would recommend, okay, you can optimize using just the method that we have here, but really what you want to be doing as well is you want to be adding utterances that you see you know, where it doesn't trigger the route you would expect it to you should be adding nodes to your routes and you should probably be adding just generally more utterances, maybe breaking apart routes into different routes if you're seeing that they don't work so well. And the other thing, as you'll see in a moment, is that we have a training data set and we can modify that to improve the performance as well. We'll, we'll get around to that in a moment. So with our encoder, we are going to initialize our encoder and I'm going to use a different one. So the default encoder that we use is mini LM. So it's a pretty old model to be honest, but it's very small and efficient. So we just have it as the default, but at some point that will probably change maybe to this model. So this is kind of like a more recent, still very small, but generally you can, you should be able to get better performance with this model. So yeah, we're going to switch across to that. So it's the E5 base V2 model. And that will just download quickly. Okay, now once that has downloaded, we can come down and initialize our route layer. So to initialize a route layer, we just need our routes and our encoder, both of which we have. And there we go. So we have our route layer. Now let's try with these uh, queries. So this one should go to politics, this one to um, chit chat, this one to, I think we had a biology question, and this one should just be none. Okay, and you can see actually we get, we almost, so we get three of four. Okay, this one actually goes to chit chat where it shouldn't. So, okay, let's take that and let's try and improve uh, what we have. So first I'm just gonna show you the evaluation or evaluate method. So this is a format that we use for both the evaluate and the fit methods. So you see that we have these X, X, Y, Y. X refers to the utterances that are the input uh, data for our uh, fit method. Whereas these, so these are the, the labels, like the intended routes that they should trigger. Okay. And I, I just like to keep it like this when I'm going through it. So it, it feels a bit easier than creating two separate lists. So. I create this test data set, which is just a list of, of the tuples. And then I unpack that. So we have our utterances here, our labels here, and then we're going to evaluate to see what we get. Now, if I run this, we actually get 75%. Okay. So, you know, um, not that great. Obviously we can, we can improve that. And you can see with the, actually, I think it's with mini LM, we do actually get perfect accuracy, but I think it's, it's better to show with this. Now, what we need to do is create a test data set. So what we did here, but bigger. So that's what I do here. 
when you're creating this, one thing that you can do, obviously, is just using an LLM to generate this for you. So GPT-4, ask it to generate um, a set of these. So we have politics, chit chat, mathematics, biology, and we have these as well. So, and we should probably add some more of those. So these are the routes that shouldn't be classified as anything. And we add those in there because we, well, if we just kind of have named routes, it's always going to choose like the similarity thresholds can just increase or decrease, sorry, to capture more area. And that means that, you know, it, it might work on this test data set, but maybe not when we have new queries coming in. So one thing that I would also recommend doing is, okay, we have mathematics, politics, chit chat. Let's add some more routes here or more, more test data that is kind of similar to those other ones, but we don't actually want it to be classified as those other ones. That will basically just make it harder for the model, the training function to get a high accuracy. And that's a good thing because we're kind of pushing the model more. It needs to try a bit harder to get something, uh, something good. So I'm going to, I'm going to write a few very quickly. Okay. So I've added these five here. You can see, okay, kind of similar to biology. These two are similar to the like mathematics routes or, or tests that we have. This one kind of similar to the chit chat one and this one obviously to politics. But at least for me, they don't quite fit into those. So they're very similar, just not quite there. So that should be good enough, I think, to get some you know, reasonable performance. Won't be anything incredible, I don't think, but we should get something. Now let's try and calculate the accuracy on the using the default thresholds that we have. So you can see with mini LM that was actually 34.85. It's pretty low. And and what you find is that different models just have different similarity thresholds where it's kind of like something is either similar if it's slightly higher or something is just not if it's slightly lower. So you get wildly different results here. So this one you actually, you know, we're probably not in the too bad a place we get 76.06 .06 there now let's come down and let's see what we have for the default routes so you can see they're all just 0 0.5 okay that, that's coming from the hugging face encoder it's just a default uh, score threshold that we have set there now we have our, our training data so the the x and we have our labels which is y so then we just train okay and by default it will go over 500 iterations of training or steps we can we can try that i'm not sure we need 500 but let's see okay so it's pretty quick you see the accuracy increasing over here and we've got it up to 82 okay so nothing special uh, but i tend to find with these smaller open source models it does tend to be a bit lower so let's try that Okay, and then we can see the updated route thresholds are these. So interestingly, mathematics is incredibly low here, which would make me think maybe we need to add some non routes to that. I I'm not sure, but that's something that I would probably consider trying. But yeah, the rest seem reasonable. Okay, so probably around this 75 down to around 60 is where we have that sort of similar to or not similar up to similar threshold for this model and as i mentioned that will vary depending on which model you're using so yeah i mean that that is it really uh, we can just have a look at the valuation again we get 81.69 okay so that is it for this very quick introduction to the optimization function here. You can also try this with other models. So for example, Arda002, which is not quite the, the latest OpenAI embedding model anymore. And also Cohere, I think as well, they would both go up to about 92% after training on the same data set. Maybe the, there's some, some differences, but not a huge number. So the model does matter a lot here, but also, how we're optimizing so we can obviously evaluate and fit but realistically we also 
should be adding new utterances to our routes and we should also be adding more data to our, our test data as we, as we go along. We really want to be iterating on this and sort of improving it over time rather than just hoping that it will fit and then that's it. So yeah, I mean, that's it for now. I hope this has been useful and interesting. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.